not going to the game tonight. I'm sick. I just flew. Alright, bye. <coughs> yeah, thanks for getting us both sick. You should have just got your flu shot. <coughs> Don't forget to get your flu shot. Education today starts now. <laughs> Welcome to Education Today. I'm Chris Garitano, Armstrong School District's multimedia technician. It's going to be that time of year where the leaves change, the glow of Friday night football lights are in the air, and the fall decorations line houses and sidewalks. But with that comes another annual season, and it's inevitable. Every year the cold and flu season comes in and strikes down most of us. Everyone gets sick to some degree, it seems, especially students who are in small areas with each other every day at school. There is some good news, however. There are things that you can do to help stay as healthy as possible and maybe even avoid that nasty stuff that jumps around out there. Who better to talk about this than the people who deal with different degrees of illness every day? With us tonight, we have Alyssa Miller, Catani Junior High School school nurse, and Beth Johns, another nurse with ACMH. Uh, welcome to Education Today, ladies. Could you please introduce yourselves for our viewers? I'm Beth Johns. I'm the Infection Control Coordinator at ACMH. Okay. And I'm Alyssa Miller. I'm the school nurse at Catani Junior High School. Okay, now uh, let's start by talking about flu shots in general. Uh, there are many thoughts on when someone should, should seek a flu shot. Uh, so when is the appropriate time to go out there? Um, the appropriate time is as soon as the shots are available. So as soon as you start seeing the signs that say, you know, that we have flu shots, that, it, um, that they're available, that's when you should get your injection. Um, the earlier the better in that it takes several weeks for immunity to develop from the shot. And the shots are effective for an entire year, so you can't get them too early. Um, and you also can't get them too late. Um, flu season cases generally start in October mm -hmm. and sometimes run through May. So even if you can't get your shot till November, December, um, you know, that's okay also. But the earlier really the better. Okay. Um, I know I've started to see some tables pop up even at the Walmarts in the area where their same flu shots are available. So, um, you know, they're out there already, I guess, uh, in, in, the, in the community. Uh, there are a lot of different opinions and myths about flu shots. Uh, can we discuss some of these? Yeah. I think the biggest myth um, that people have is that you can get the flu shot, um, or the flu, excuse me, from a flu shot. And I, um, even employees at the hospital, you know, we get that all the time. You know, I'm here to give you your flu shot. Oh, I don't get the flu shot because it'll give me the flu. And that absolutely can't happen. Mm -hmm. You know, the flu shot is made up of dead virus. It can't um, actually give you the flu. Okay. Um, now, what types of flu shots are out there for people to consider? Well, there's actually... Um, two types of shots, but the one shot is only appropriate for people over the age of 65. It's an extra strength shot because um, older people have difficulty developing immunity because of their age. Um, so for the, m the rest of us, there's only one shot and then there's a nasal mist that's available if you're really afraid of needles. Okay, well I know for one that I am. <laughs> I don't do needles well and uh, so maybe if I need to go this, th this direction, the the mist might be the way for me to go personally, but um, now there are several locations. I'm sure I did. We did mention uh, Walmart just a minute ago, um, but where all can these flu shots be attended? Um, physician offices will have them. The hospital itself, you know, holds clinics in our primary care offices. Um, really, any drugstore, pharmacy um, usually will have clinics as the season progresses. But uh, every primary care physician will have flu shots available. Okay. Uh, now, are there, what, if any, possible risks or side effects are associated with having a flu shot? Well, you know, all medications have a risk um, because they are something, you know, that you're putting into your body. The primary risk for any type of medication is an allergic reaction. Mm -hmm. um, but the risk of a serious reaction for the flu shot is very, very minimal. Um, the most common reactions are very mild reactions such as soreness of the injection site, redness or swelling at the injection site. Um, some people develop some muscle aches and a low-grade fever. 
you might get a little bit of a runny nose, you know, but though, even those are really very rare. The most common one is just soreness at the injection site. A severe allergic reaction, though, um, is something that can happen, but as I said, it's very rare. Some young children, if they get the flu shot and get the pneumococcal vaccine at the same time, mm -hmm. can develop fever that can lead to seizures. So that's something for parents to think about. Okay. Um, now, if you mentioned this uh, vaccine, this other vaccine that children could get, um, there may be some viewers who don't know what that is. What kind of vaccine is that? Exactly? That's a, um, the pneumococcal vaccine is a vaccine that prevents bacterial and certain bacterial infections. Mm -hmm. And it's a pretty common vaccine really that all children should get. Um, but again, you know, you may want to weigh getting both at the same time. Okay. Uh, and just a step back to also you said that there are potentially um, a potential alert, severe allergic reaction yes. to it. Um, is there a time frame where normally uh, you may start seeing effects uh, after this shot is given? We usually ask people, like for example, if you've never had a flu shot before, we give you a flu shot and we, we ask you to stay with us for 15 minutes so that we can monitor you. But I would guess anywhere within the first 24 hours. Okay. And you know, a re alert, excuse me, an allergic reaction is anything from hives to redness to a severe reaction is shortness of breath, mm -hmm. you know, unable to catch your breath, you know, those types of things. Anything that impacts your breathing um, re really you know requires that you get to your physician or the emergency room as soon as possible okay that's actually what I was going to try to get into next just for a minute um, you know some people have that we'll call it a tough guy mentality so to speak where oh I you know I I just have hives for instance mm -hmm. I don't need to go to the hospital for that or get checked out is there a point or a certain kind of symptoms where people should say you know definitely seek medical attention sooner than later shortness of breath just primarily it's yes. shortness of breath. Swelling, swelling in addition to the hives, swelling of your eyes, mm -hmm. um, your lips, you know, those types of things indicate that you're having a more severe allergic reaction. Okay, All right. good, good information to know. Um, now, not everyone will heed the warning to get a shot or necessarily even take precautions to help avoid getting the flu. Um, I know that there are statistics out there, maybe some of those statistics will help uh, sway uh, a few people anyway who might not normally go out and get that. Can we share uh, some statistics? Um, on an average, the Centers for Disease Control um, states that 36,000 people a year in the United States alone die from in influenza. Wow. You know, and that's a, that's a large number of people dying from uh, vaccine preventable illness. That's uh, quite a few people for simply not going out and getting a shot or right. you know, taking right. care of yourself. Um, now, to go along with that, there are obviously preventative measures that can be taken um, for the flu season. Uh, can we talk about some of these? Sure. Probably the most um, common thing that you can do is just hand washing. Proper hand washing is just very easy. Uh, a lot of people just feel like if they put their hands under water, that's washing their hands. So we like to teach the kids um, proper hand washing techniques at an early age. That way, that's one easy thing that they can do to prevent germs, um, flu, any kind of germs from entering their body. Other preventative me measures can be um, getting, having a good diet, lots of rest, getting a good night's sleep, um, exercising. Those are all very uh, easy things that anyone can do. Um, but the number one thing is, you know, we do encourage all people to get flu shots. Um, not only are you protecting yourself, but you're protecting other people around you. So we, that's the other thing that we encourage. If you're sick, to stay at home. Mm -hmm. You know, please do not go to school or work and infect others if you have a fever above 100, if you have flu-like symptoms, such as a severe cough, um, diarrhea, vomiting, mm -hmm. you should stay at home. And parents should keep their kids at home if they are showing any of those symptoms also. All right. And um, I know like sometimes with various different kinds of illnesses, um, some people say, oh, that's extremely contagious or that's not really contagious, so you're okay. Um, to what degree, I, I know there's a difference between just your common cold and a flu, but maybe, you know, is there, what is the difference between the two and um, if one of them is more contagious, maybe we discuss that for a minute. I mean, I'd say they're both probably equally contagious. The flu is a much more serious illness than a cold. Mm -hmm. um, the symptoms are more severe. 
Um, you almost always have a fever, muscle aches. Um, the flu is a respiratory illness. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of people mm -hmm. think um, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea, oh, I have the flu. And, and that's not the case. The flu always is a respiratory illness. Okay. You know, you can develop a severe cough, a lot of mucus. Um, whereas a common cold, you know, the course may run, you feel a little bit yucky, you know, for three or four days. Generally, a case of influenza is going to put you down for about a week. Okay. You're going to be very ill for about a week. Okay. So maybe if some of those signs start to be seen, they can hopefully nip it in the butt early and, and get to a doctor and get that taken care of. So. Um, okay, thank you very much. We're going to take just a short break, and we'll be right back with more of Armstrong School District's education today. When we return, we'll talk about what is done in our schools to help educate and avoid the yearly sickness. Before I came to IUP, I had no idea what college would be like or what role I would play or where I'd be in the future. But when I came to IUP, everything changed. I met people who really made me feel like I belonged. I had great classes at a great nationally ranked university. Hi, my name is Megan Miller. I'm a fine arts major and this is my university. We're back with Armstrong School District's Education Today. We're talking about preparing for the flu season with Alyssa Miller and Beth Johns, both of whom are nurses. Um, let's start with uh, elementary schools, since we're gonna jump into a little bit about what our, we do here in the district. Um, I know hygiene is focused on, but what is included in the hygiene area and suggestions that are given? The school nurse um, at the elementary level, along with the phys ed teachers, health teachers, and just the kindergarten and first grade teachers work together, mm -hmm. and they formulate um, a lesson that's developmentally appropriate for the young kids, basically teaching them um, how to wash their hands. So they start with that, and they teach the kids through coloring pages, singing songs. Um, they do like lab experiments with glitter, showing the kids how to properly wash their hands for how long and uh, with the appropriate products. So once the, the kids demonstrate that, um, they just encourage you know, frequent washing before lunch, before um, or after recess, before, mm -hmm. if they touch animals. We just review all the basics with them. So um, once they reach junior high level or high school, then it, we approach it more through flyers, posters, um, the gym teachers along with uh, myself and the high school nurses, we just teach the kids about getting their flu shot, staying home when they're sick. They're a little more mature and sure. can just handle, you know, some different information. Okay. Um, I think I talked, we, I was going to ask if there's anything done differently in the secondary buildings, but j I guess just primarily the flyers and things of that nature that are handed out? We also, there's a video that the Department, Department of Health has given us, I think for about five years we've had it, and it's why don't we do it in our sleep? And it's a, it's a very comical video about teaching and encouraging individuals to cough and sneeze into their sleeves of their shirt as opposed to their hand sure. or handkerchief, handkerchiefs that in the past um, a lot of people still do. So we show it d normally during uh, staff in services for our staff members and then morning announcements during activity periods um, so the kids can understand, you know, if they do cough or sneeze into their hands or touch, you know, they go wash their hands right away, but we want to prevent it by just uh, coughing and sneezing the appropriate way. Sure. And um, I know there's research that even shows about uh, visual learning and that mm -hmm. happens in all aspects. So, uh, you know, video is probably a little bit more entertaining for them to watch than, uh, than just someone sitting there lecturing to them about it and yes. saying, well, read this flyer and then that goes in the book mm -hmm. bag and doesn't come out until June when they go home. So. Yeah. Um, this video is a little comical, as you mentioned. Uh, we're going to show a little bit of this uh, video right now that our students see to kick off the flu season. Please take this opportunity to adjust the volume on your television set. <coughs> Millions of disease-causing germs are launched into the atmosphere every time someone coughs or sneezes. It is customary to cough and sneeze into one's hand, supposedly to prevent the spread of germs. But germs get onto the cougher's hands and are spread to telephones and doorknobs, and from there they are spread to other people's hands and mouths and who knows where else. 
the best place to cough is into fabric, such as one's sleeve, where germs are trapped while they desiccate and die. But people in polite society do not cough into their sleeves. Such behavior is frowned upon. The purpose of this video is to make coughing into one's sleeve fashionable and even patriotic. It's the right thing, the polite thing to do. You will now see four excellent, slightly different coughing techniques executed first into the right sleeve and then into the left. The technique will vary depending on your dimensions, the flexibility of your joints, whether you are wearing long or short sleeves, and your ability to cough at an angle. Notice the slight change of position during a sneeze, with the nose a little lower. You will now see a series of coughs and sneezes performed by random subjects. Their coughs will be judged by our panel of three infectious disease experts, Dr. Graham Stain, Dr. Blood Hagar, and Dr. Polymorph. First, the coughs. <coughs> That would be a four. That's the a left four. hand was needlessly four. contaminated. <laughs> Ten. Perfect. Nine. Hand on opposite right. shoulder creates a mass. That was ideal. That was beautiful. Suit. <coughs> four point seven. Four. The elbow's a bad target for people sir. with long arms. Eight. Seven point six. Practical. Eight. Oh, I like it. It's the black suit guy. Zero. What planet did he come from? Now, the sneezers. <laughs> Holy shit. Two. One. He contaminated his hands. Yuck. Why bother with the Kleenex? <laughs> That's a one. Her right hand is more her dangerous than her left. <laughs> Five. Five points. His head got hit. Impractical. <laughs> nine. 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 Nearly they perfect. Messed up their hair. Get <laughs> that guy out Disgusting. of here. He doesn't rate the time Yuck. of day. A perfect ten. Nine points. Ten. Nine. Awesome. What can I say? She's the one to imitate. We must train ourselves to cough into the nearest appropriate fabric which is usually a sleeve. Most healthcare garments lend themselves well to this technique. Unfortunately, many street clothes do not. To avoid messes, we should formulate coughing strategies for the clothes and accessories we are wearing each day. I have to save my shirt if I did that first time. Paper tissues are good cough receptacles when they are placed over the mouth properly, but using them usually results in hand contamination. <laughs> They should not be reused. Handkerchiefs suffer from the same hand contamination and reuse problems, and they have the additional disadvantage of poor accessibility. From an infection control standpoint, the perfect answer would be an armband that could be changed after each use. However, society is not yet ready for such a radical change. So, in keeping with the recommendations of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, why don't we just do it in our sleeves? It's the right thing. It's the polite thing to do. And remember, if you make a mistake and cough or sneeze into your hands, please wash them immediately. Now, uh, as a very informative video, I think, um, our viewers at home saw a, a brief clip of it. Uh, hopefully students and staff alike will be impacted by the video, and obviously everything that we can do is going to help a little bit, it, you know, even if it affects maybe one or two students, it, that might, you know, of course, snowball and end up stopping 20 people from getting sick, you know, mm -hmm. through the spread uh, of viruses. So, uh, now speaking of the staff, um, we, you did mention that this video is shown to them at in services. Mm -hmm. Is there anything different or anything in addition to that that uh, is gone to over to educate them? Basically, 
at the beginning of the school year, we have our staff meeting, and I, I review uh, proper immunizations for adults. A lot of adults, um, they aren't sure of what immunizations they should have. So I just encourage them to check with their physician, see what they need updates with, and encourage them to get the, their, their proper immunizations. Also, we talk about universal precautions, which um, discusses bloodborne illnesses. So I teach this uh, staff if they would come in contact with any blood or bodily fluids, how to properly handle taking care of that um, without putting themselves at risk. Sure, okay. Uh, now the flyers that you mentioned that are distributed, um, what specific information did these flyers provide? Um, and is there anything else in addition to these flyers that is provided to the students or staff? Um, generally, it's just basic information. There's uh, flyers in the restrooms just reminding students and staff to wash their hands. Um, in the cafeterias, we do offer hand sanitizers in all the buildings also, which is a nice alternative if you do not have access to a sink or a soap. Mm -hmm. So uh, we encourage the students, the sink and soap are, are number one, but if you do not have access, you know, use the hand sanitizers. At least it's better than not washing your hands at all. But just reminders, basically, I right. think wash your hands, the proper way to wash your hands. Um, statistics for older students so they can see you know what impact getting a flu shot has and not getting a flu sh flu shot has so that's about it okay uh, now in regards to preparing for preparing the school for the flu season is there anything else that's done that we haven't maybe already mentioned or covered I don't think so, yeah, I, don't think so. Mm -mm. I know we give a pretty comprehensive review I think of, of everything that we're doing here in the buildings um, and finally, uh, we haven't mentioned this yet, but who is Rocky and what is his role with preventative health? <coughs> Excuse me, Rocky is the hospital's infection control mascot and he was actually um, an idea from our CEO um, and he developed the whole, the whole idea and Rocky um, is great to take out into the community. Mm -hmm. um, he comes with me like to do s education at the schools and he also goes to parades, um, you know, and all kind of community events and health fairs. And he's there to promote hand washing during flu season. He encourages people to get their flu shots. Um, if we're at a flu clinic where we're injecting young children, mm -hmm. he comes along to sort of um, provide some, you know, some com comedic relief, I guess. Sure, yeah. So he does a very good job, and we're really very appreciative of the work that he does with us. Okay, too bad we couldn't get them down here today, but you know, we were mentioning during a car commercial break that you know, the lights might be a little bit warm for him yeah, to be he wouldn't. Under. he wouldn't have liked the lights, I don't think. <laughs> okay, now um, just uh, to wrap up, is there anything else that either of you had to add or for the benefit of our students or community? I don't think so, just get your flu shot. Flu shot. Okay, uh, thank you very much for coming down today. You're welcome. Uh, and that is our show for today. I'd like to thank our guests, Alyssa Miller and Beth Johns, for taking time out of their busy schedules to help get us ready for the incoming flu season. Our thanks also go out to the TV production students of Catanian High School, led by their teacher, Mr. Josh Miklos. They were our film crew today. Please join us again next week for another look at the Armstrong School District. Visit our website for updated information about the district, and have a great week.